Mother. Man. Hey, this is Joey, and unfortunately, I'm on the side of the road broke town. Life's a bitch. Listen to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666 mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Well, what is up? What it's Wednesday, Chris? Fuck a little is going confusing. down. Yeah, Wednesday. Doing a podcast a on a Wednesday instead of a Tuesday at Hornside Studios. A little scheduling conflicts. We had a bump it a day, but yeah. I'm going to upload it by midnight so the regularly scheduled listeners that hear it early on, like in other countries. We'll have it on time. Right, so, and unfortunately, we had another bad thing go down. Yeah, there. today's just been really weird. Chris, you're in here with me, but our, our buddy Joey. Joey could not make it. Unfortunately, he was on his way home from Ohio and uh, yeah. got to Indiana, and the fucking water pump went out on his yeah. goddamn car. So yeah. he is uh, literally stranded right now figuring shit out. So, yeah. Joey... So- we love you, bro. Wish you was here. Hope everything works out, man. Yeah, and we did that in the promo, Joey, just to bust your balls. But, of course, we wish you well. Um, I had fun on Saturday doing a book signing at the Painted Wraith in Bloomington, Illinois. Good turnout, Chris. And oh, yeah. A lot of readers came by and uh, very, very cool. Yeah, you said you had somebody come like two hours. Yeah, she said in. she drove two hours to uh, make it before I left and uh, bought all my books, all four of them. Oh, so yeah. that was really cool. She had Creation of Chaos 1 on her Kindle, and she loved it. And then she heard I was going to be there, so she made a... I don't know where she right. lived. She didn't say, but... Get them uh, physical really copies. Cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. So thanks to everybody that showed up. And, of course, thanks to our friends Mike and Stephanie Stoltz for letting me do that. And it was a success. So we're going to be back uh, out there when the uh, Deeper Than Dead is, is yeah. out. So... That'll be early 2022, so I'll be back there. And uh, they do sell Creation of Chaos 3 in the store, so if you missed it, go by and check out the store. it's been sold out three times there, so... Yeah, very, very cool. It's done very well, so... All right, Chris, what shirt you got on over there, dude? I got on on the old uh, Unabonger shirt, man. Oh, Oh, nice. Thanks, Elizabeth, for the shirt. Appreciate it. That's really cool. Yeah, you brought it up on the show, and then Elizabeth, one of our listeners down in Arkansas, sent that to you. Oh, yeah. Fucking badass shirt, man. Yeah, I love it when listeners just send stuff like that. That's very thoughtful. Shit, yeah. And uh, I've got this brand new Ed Gein shirt on, Chris. Which is fucking dope as fuck. Isn't it? Hell yeah. It's like Pl- Plainfield blue. Plainfield Cemetery, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, it's got the Plainfield Cemetery sign above yeah, his the head. Bl- like the different blues in it. It's awesome, man. I yeah, it. it's really, really cool. I got it at the Dark History Convention. I'll talk about that as we get into that later on. Uh, last week, we did our Brutal Rewind 8 on the Watsika Wonder uh, we revisited a case that we had covered back, Chris, episode 34. Holy shit. God damn, dude. December 2018. It <laughs> seems like forever ago. You know? Yeah, it's, it's weird. almost 2022 right now. But. I know. It's a possession case that uh, happened in uh, Watsika, Illinois, which is about two hours northeast of where we are. And it is a really, really crazy one. So if you missed it, go check out Brutal Rewind 8. We were about 800, 850 listens to that one so far when I checked it today. And uh, so, yeah, if you dig creepy, weird shit, that, that's, that's for one. you. That's one. And that was our theme, Chris, of October is doing some weird topics. So we did witchcraft. We did um, the Watsika oh, Wonder. And then the first yeah. week was... Uh, what the fuck did we do? Yeah, it's escaping me. But all of the topics were all about, uh, you know, creepy Alistair Crowley. Alistair Crowley. Yeah, how could I forget old Alistair? (laughs) So that was a good one. So so if you like that stuff and missed any of those, all four of them are good uh, from last month. Now, tonight we got a good one to throw down. Um, She got bumped a couple different times, but this week... We're going to be doing the chilling story of a nurse gone wrong, Chris. Yes, I mean, we are. Like, wow. 
did some fucked up weird shit. She really did, man. This is one of those stories that as you start to read more about it, you're like, man, this is really a fucking dark. Yeah. Dark, dark. I mean, beyond like, murdering the, the whole head, dude? embracing shit. Yeah, we're going to get to it. But she's killing her patients. She's a nurse in Boston, 1895, so old school to 1901. And uh, you may not be familiar with Jane Toppin, but Jolly you definitely. Jane. Jolly Jane. Yeah, old Jolly Jane is going to be in our murder segment coming up. And just a crazy story. Not just the typical poisoning. She did some really evil shit. Yeah, she did. And some really twisted sexual stuff as well, which we'll get to. Um, she not only liked them, but you know, literally she, getting off on them dying is like really disturbing. Is fucking weird. And our girl Carla Faye Tucker, she was kind of like that too. <laughs> yeah, so we've, bit, yeah. <laughs> we've we've had a few of them. So some of the sickest, creepy shit. Every time I swung the axe, like right. Hey. <laughs> um, and really, this one could have been done in in October too. As fucked yeah. up as this one is. So thanks to all of you uh, that have commented and sent in emails in support of the passing of our, our beloved CK. Uh, he died October 22nd, 2021 at his home in Danbury, Connecticut. So I had a, a one listener from Canada sent me an email and said, man, I don't get on social media much. So I didn't right. know until I heard the brutal rewind and, was just like totally floored. Yeah. So well, thanks for fucking reaching yeah, out. Yeah. So for thank real. you guys. It it means a lot. It really does. And and we decided that we wanted to devote the metal segment this week to to, to CK. CK yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about CK in the metal segment. I mean, he was as metal as a human being could possibly be. Um, definitely gonna eventually when we feel like we can because. The thought of going through sound bites and stuff of CK would be a little yeah, difficult yeah, right moment, now. Yeah. I hope you can understand that. And we do want to do a full-blown, complete episode just about CK. We'll probably have his wife, Laura, on, yep. and we'll put some CK stuff on there. But that is going to be uh, pretty rough to do right now. Yeah, we but we that. think yeah, here, within the next couple, three months, we, we'll do it, and we'll do it right I hope you guys understand that. But thank you, those that reached out. Uh, killer cage match tonight. Uh, we need to thank some listeners. Chris yeah, gave we, us some random numbers. We got Holly Joe Ziegler. We nice. got the champion number giver, Rebecca Boone. Yeah, I think if there was a champion in this, Rebecca definitely, <laughs> definitely. would. We might have to put Rebecca in the killer cage match. <laughs> Fucking right. <dude. laughs> and the third and one. the third one, we got CK's wife, Laura. So, hell yeah, appreciate that. Yeah, it's cool to see Laura checking the page out and liking and commenting. And she's just great. And uh, thankfully, her sister's. And some cousins were there this weekend. Keep her company. And so she and did support. some stuff with the yep. family. And she's, you know, she's she's dealing. Um, and it's it's certainly not easy. Um, now, we've got an interesting matchup tonight, Chris, going on in the cage. Who yes, do we, we got do. fighting tonight, man? We got the Sicer loving mother. Si Sicer. Cipher loving motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> the Zodiac killer. Oh, yeah. Who they say they know who he is. That's now, right. But, Maybe. But, and, then we got, and then we got that fucking sick motherfucker, the toy box killer, oh, David dude. Parker Ray. God damn, dude. Yeah, that's that about as is, bad as it gets. That dude. dude. If you haven't heard that <laughs> dude's episode, holy shit. It's yeah, so that's a good one to go oh. dig back on some days. David Parker Ray and an infuriating ending. Yeah. Like very infuriating. throwing shit at your TV kind of ending to that yeah. story. So be prepared if you're not familiar. But yeah, the Zodiac going up against the Toy Box Killer, uh, David Parker Ray. They're going to have two objects and a variable to make this, this one a good one. Yep. So we'll do that in mayhem as always. And thank you to everybody out there listening. Now, I know when I was doing the brutality report in low 12, which was a written magazine online magazine right. I did for like 11 years. I used to see big spikes in numbers when a tragic event happened. Like for example, when I got cancer, like the, right. the hits were just out of sight when Tim died hits out just of control. Over, yeah. yeah. Cause people want to, you know, go check it out. And, and that, 
so I'm not I'm not saying that that's bad. That's just normal human reaction for sure. Um, but we did see a big jump in numbers uh, since CK's passing. Uh, so CK would be fucking proud. Oh, he'd be happy. Uh, Thirty three hundred total listens uh, this okay. last week. So thank you guys, really. And and if whatever reason you listened, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, just keep and listening. So keep listening. Tell yeah. your friends. Uh, Chris, we got a lot on our plate tonight. Going to be traveling east to Boston, Boston for this one. It's wicked cold. <laughs> That's right. And we're going to try to, though, avoid getting roofied or worse by some <laughs> fucked up nurse God damn. who likes to fucking murder. So, yeah, let's get our fucking murder on. <laughs> God damn. Exodus, man. Loving some Exodus, especially lately. Chris, they got that new album coming out November 22nd. I'm pumped. I pre-ordered it. Um, I actually, I went on their website. You know, I do this at Christmas time. I got to buy something for my son. Right. And I'm not going to spoil it because he sometimes listens to the show. So if he hears this, I don't want to tell you what I got him. But I was on the Exodus shop. I bought him some stuff while I was there. Might as well. Might as well get a couple things for myself. So, uh, but one of those was the advanced order of the new album coming out, Persona Non Grata. I'm really psyched. Uh, but anyway, that was Exodus uh, with the Rob Dukes era stuff, as it was, and it soon shall be. And uh, speaking of Rob Dukes, I reached out to him, and he responded very quickly. I uh, asked him about doing an interview for the show and yep. he was like fuck yeah so we're doing it tomorrow the so day this episode comes out you'll yeah, be doing the interview yeah. exactly so i'm going to be talking to rob dukes and we'll be putting that on an episode soon because he's in a different band now generation kill which is a cool fucking, fucking name. Band name hell yeah uh and rob uh, living in arizona and doing a different project so anxious to talk to him and speaking of exodus with the new album coming out, I reached out to their label, Nuclear Blast, to see if I could set something up. The lady replied the next day, and it looks like Tom Hunting is available, which would be fucking would be awesome. Fucking great. Drummer for Exodus, just having gone through that wicked cancer fight and everything going on with that, being an awesome interview. So I'm anxious to get that locked in, but that one is still uh, not set up. Uh, confirmed yet so all right now we're going to be discussing the crazy crazy yeah. case of jane toppin as you said uh, chris old jolly jane, jolly jane uh was what they called her a nurse who murdered her own patients now she was convicted of 12 murders but she actually confessed to 31 i saw Somewhere else it was 33, which I thought was interesting with Gacy. Gacy, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know which is right. But she, definitely she got convicted of 12, and that's still right. fucking... It's still a lot. Uh, her crimes were you know, going on from 1895 to 1901, so a very short period of time. But they believe she could have killed more than 100 I mean, she was in a lot of hospitals and private practices. So, like, right. She had a lot of opportunities. Yeah, all the opportunity in the world to do whatever she wanted. Yeah. At a time period where they weren't keeping records, of course, computers weren't a thing. So, it would have been tough to catch her. Um, She was quoted, Chris, as saying her (laughs) ambition was, quote, (laughs) to have killed more people. Helpless people, yeah, helpless people, than any other man or woman who ever lived. Dude, what the fuck, bro? What the fuck? Like, not just people. Like, if it was her Facebook people. profile, that would be like her saying. I mean, that'd be kind <laughs> right. of fucked yeah, yeah, up, yeah, like right? <laughs> wow, Jane, that that's nice. I don't know what to say about that. That's uh, not good. Not yeah, good. that's like the fucking idiot I knew in high school. I'm not going to say his name. But when I first got on Facebook, I went to his profile just to see what he was doing. You know, I was fucking hadn't heard from him in 30 fucking years. Right. And uh, he had his, his, uh, um, his little hero or whatever person he admired, most admired or something like that. It was Mao Zedong. 
And I was like, messaged them. I'm like, hey, so and so, like, good to see you on here. And I just happened to notice, like, you do realize that that dude killed like six million of his own people, starved him to death. Right. Like, as brutal as it fucking gets, you know? And he's like, yeah, I know. He said, you got to crack a few eggs to make Jesus an omelet. Christ, I was like, man. dude. You ain't right. Delete, <laughs> you know? So so that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> just this fucked up statement to make helpless people. I mean, she doesn't just say people. Uh, she no, actually helpless. points and out they that they are literally helpless, helpless people. Yeah, so, and the even stranger is that she actually sexually got off when they died. Lay in like, bed was with a thing, them and okay? Basically, molest them and shit. Yeah, like, caressing them and shit. Weird. She gets into bed. She's like stroking their hair and kissing them, fondling them. Very fucked up. It's going to be murder metal mayhem style tonight. I think Chris is right in our wheelhouse. Yeah. We're going to be able to hit this one pretty good. Now, I just want to say something. I've said this before, but Jane Toppin is one person who there isn't much out there. And I actually listened to a couple different podcasts. One wasn't quite reading it off the Wikipedia page. The other one was. I was literally looking at the Wikipedia page while I was listening to them. Right. And they were, one of them was literally reading word it. Word basically, yeah. So I just got to say, that is so fucking lame to me. Why bother? If you really don't have the time or the effort or whatever to want to go a little bit further than that, that's cool. But we don't fucking do stupid shit like that. It was wow. so fucking obvious. We did some good work on this one. There's a lot of stuff that I found that was wrong. On Wikipedia, which is how I was able to figure out that they were wrong um, because the book I used was correct uh, from a very, very good source, friend of the show, Peter Vronsky. Yes, sir. So all I'm saying, Chris, you know, it's fucked up. But Jolly Jane is definitely among the, the more fucked up ones we've done with all the nuances to this one. Yeah, definitely. Like. I don't even know how well known. I didn't even know who Jane Toppin was until. Yeah, that. I mean, it's not a name I would think most yeah. true crime fans would like really I, know, especially 1895. Right. I, mean, that's yeah, I going had back. no freaking idea. And I don't know if like most people, normal people would know who that is. She's not right. like a big freaking name. To no, it. no, not to at all. About, even though she, her crimes are fucking horrible, dude. Right. Like not good. No. Now, I had heard the name before, but I really didn't know much about her. And uh, because she's not one of those high-profile serial killers, especially a female serial killer, I mean, she stands in a class that not too many occupy no. for body count. I mean, she really fucking... She got some numbers. She was definitely uh, among the worst of the worst, and that's why it is amazing that people don't know much about her but i think a lot of it has to do with when it happened and uh serial killers that poison and do things like that don't seem to be as shocking as yeah, you know the sure. ones that are violently that probably because of the violence this is like just sure. laid back and more calm. chill right yeah yeah, it's legitimately. weird to say that about fucking it does. murder. It's it more does. chilled, bro. It's more chilled. I mean, I'd rather die like this than be <laughs> oh, brutally stabbed. Dude, you know? Definitely, dude, uh, definitely. She was born Honora Kelly uh, in 1854 in Boston. Uh, she's the daughter of very poor Irish immigrants. And at this time, the Irish were treated absolutely horribly and they're basically second class citizens. I mean, yeah, it was really bad. Really people, kind of. Yeah, because they were taking the jobs, you know, the things that you hear even today about immigrants. Um, her mother died of consumption, which we know, of course, is tuberculosis. That's what they called it. If I keep going like this, I'm going to die of consumption. <laughs> like consuming beer. <laughs> consuming hops, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> But when Honora was very young, her mom dies. So this is traumatic. Um, but it was a very common, I found out it was the number one killer at that time, tuberculosis. Right. Now, her dad, Peter Kelly, was known as an eccentric and an alcoholic with a Damn nickname, <laughs> Kelly the Crack. I Kelly that the was Crack. Kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> like a crack like, pot, yeah, like crack crazy. Because he's fucking nuts, yeah. Because he was. 
He was a mean drunk. He got into a lot of fights. He lost jobs over it. Uh, he was just very violent, abusing alcohol. A lot of rumors going around about her dad's mental health. And Chris, there was one rumor yeah. that this motherfucker sewed his, his own eye, eyes shut. shut. Yeah, and he's like he was a, a tailor. Yeah, he's a tailor. Like, how are you supposed to fuck? <laughs> I guess you got to really get your eyes on your work sometimes. And otherwise, it isn't going to work out. You got to pay attention to what you're doing. Get a close-up view. Right. And I don't know, man. I don't know how you're going to do your job with your eyes sewn shut, though. I don't know <laughs> either, man. I wonder if that's where Alice in Chains got that fucking... About sewing the yeah, eyes so, shut. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> really fucked up. I actually used that sewn eyes shut thing in the, my book, uh, Enoch Strange, where his eyes were sewn, sewn shut. shut. One yeah. eye was sewn shut, and they threatened to sew the other one yeah, shut. Yeah, but you definitely got some fucking issues going on if you're fucking trying to sew your own eyelid shut. Like, why would you do that unless you're fucking nuts? Like, right. hey, bro, check this out. I mean... And to his defense, they were rumors, so who knows if they were true, but there was... You know, I hope it was quite true, a few honestly. accounts. It's pretty fucking brutal, man. <laughs> I hope it was true. <laughs> the imagery there. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, what the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not driving me to the dance. Like, fuck. <laughs> you're not driving anywhere. 1860, uh, not even cars yet. Uh, when Honora was only six years old, her father took her and her siblings to live with their grandmother. Now, when I looked on Wikipedia, it said that he took him directly to the asylum himself. But in the book, I found that he did not. All the kids went to the grandmother. The grandmother couldn't deal. And the two youngest ones were sent to the orphanage. And I think she raised the other two. And the th I know one wound up going to a different asylum. So right. it's a fucking mess is what it was. The Boston Female it's Asylum. Crazy. When you can just like not want to take care of your kids, you just go drop them off. Yeah, and fucking, I mean, here you go. Yeah, I don't even. I can't. I don't want to do it here. You yeah, take it's them, fucked up to think of it, man. As a parent, you know, both of us, you know, fathers, and yeah, I couldn't imagine it. But her younger sister or her older sister, uh, Honora was the youngest. Della was the next youngest. So those two went. Um, and these are you know orphans, so they're from indigent, poor families, not able to take care of them. These places are known for being pretty brutal. Yeah, very brutal. Um, definitely not the place you would think a young girl would want to be raised in. But this is, of course, a different time. And some said that they were actually rescued from a very bad home life with like visible bruises, signs of some potential abuse from the right. father. So I mean, as bad as it was that they had to go to this place, it sounds like even in that was better than what they were dealing with at home. And yeah. they did actually go to school and 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 that sort of thing. They they well right. they schooled them in, in the, the asylum, asylum but whatever, they yeah. they went through you know homework and all that lessons, and she became very good at that. You know that was definitely her thing. Um, I wasn't able to find many accounts of what happened to them in the asylum, but like I said, they went to school in there, and then what happened is when they're like twelve or thirteen, they get sent to a. A rich or upper middle class work for him basically yeah, like servant. a servant yeah and their room and board would be paid for with their work and then they'd be given when they reached 18 they'd be given 50 bucks and see ya yeah we and have. you got to go deal with it but you know at that time 50 bucks yeah it's a pretty sizable probably five six hundred bucks Shit, you know, i bet it's least. probably more than maybe that. more maybe more i bet it was more than that yeah so records show that Della uh, became a prostitute and an alcoholic and died in just total squalor. So that's Had awful. Nothing, just Another sister treat. who was not in the asylum was later committed to a different asylum. So these asylums are all over the fucking place. So it does sound like a history of mental health problems. Very much. Or going lack on of here. caring. Like I said, or lack of caring, just dropping the kids off. But right. When you go through that life, I'm sure you're fucking. Yeah. But I like, mean, the father gave them to the mother. And I mean, she probably just yeah, the couldn't afford to support all, yeah, you know, right, the all these four yeah. kids. So, I mean, it sucks that she had to bring them to the asylum. But if she just couldn't take care of them, I don't know. I mean, it's fucked up. The. the, the the underlying thing is the dad should have fucking taken care of business, but he but he didn't. But he didn't. So 
Now, Chris, less than two years after being at the asylum, Honora becomes an indentured servant for Ann Topin or Toppin and Ann winds Toppin. up taking her name. And she's never she, adopted by them, right. but and treated changed, pretty that's fucking she, her bad. Her name got changed to Jane, too. She's like, because of, of the Irish thing, she didn't want her to have an Irish-sounding name and shit. That's right. She, yeah. So it's like, all right, so now this is your name. Right. Sounds like Roots. <laughs> it, dude, it's fucked up like that. This like, woman was like so appalled yeah, and didn't want and anybody she, to know that an Irish girl was living in her house. Right. They, the Toppins had a girl that was a little bit younger than Jane, right? Or was uh, she, I'm not sure younger or older, but close in age. Close, Elizabeth like a year, yeah. was the stepsister. And yeah, they didn't. Uh, they obviously treated her like their daughter, but de- even after giving them her their giving her their name, they still treated her like total shit. Yeah, it was almost like, like a Cinderella type yeah, of situation. Yeah, There's a yeah. lot of similarities that I wonder if that's, that's maybe where that crazy. guy got that idea. I don't know when Cinderella was written, but this is very similar it to that. Is like you know, that. it is kind of fucked up. Um so at the time, you know, the Italians weren't much better regarded in communities, but The story, Chris, they came up with was you're going to be the daughter of Italian family that that died. Yeah. And so I took you in and we changed your last name to To our name name and to welcome you into our family kind of bullshit story. We were meanwhile they're treating her like shit. So it's fucked up. But that was their story. Another thing they had going against them, the Irish and the uh, Italians, was that they were Catholic. Catholic. At a time when Catholicism was really looked down upon here. And when you think about it, the first uh, Catholic president would have been JFK. So you're talking 1960, I think, was when he got elected. So yeah, over that's, years later. you know, that's almost 100, yeah, almost years, 100 years, you later. know, uh, that it took for people to warm up to that. So that it's was nuts, a big thing. Dude. Religion was a lot more important back then than it is right now. Um, so you had all these things going against them and that's why, so you think about this girl who's got to feel bad about her dad, not wanting her, her grandma, not wanting her. Now she's in this fucking indentured servant bit and they're treating her like Cinderella telling her they can't even have her name. Because yeah. they don't want people to know that she's a fucking Irish kid. It's fucking stupid. So this is like building, though. I mean, all these fucking things piled on top of each each other. It's no wonder she turned out to be a fucking mess, man. I mean, anybody would. Shit. Yeah. I mean, it's it's terrible shit. So the trauma, though, of losing her mother, no love or anything in the house, in any of the houses she's been in, a violent drunk of a father who potentially abused her, and then a grandmother who gave up on her, and this new family now. I mean, she just feels probably like as low as you could possibly feel about yourself. Probably like nobody, pretty much, I would think. Yeah, I mean, it's just absolutely terrible. Now, as you mentioned, Chris, Elizabeth, she's the Toppin's daughter, uh, but they felt, or at least uh, Jane felt, that she was in competition with Elizabeth. So she felt jealous. Can't blame her. Yeah, I mean, you know, they're they're treating her like a princess and you like a slave. Always going to be in competition. Yeah, I mean, it's it's normal. But the other thing, too, was that Elizabeth was pretty and thin and uh, Jane was not attractive and kind of heavy set. Right. You know, and it's it is what it is. I mean, you know, it's life. But she was jealous of her for that, too. Um, now, Elizabeth winds up marrying a young deacon, Chris, at the church, old right. Oramel Brigham. <laughs> That's a fucking name there. <laughs> That's a name for fucking hell. Oramel Brigham. Uh, and Oramel moves into the house because the mother died. And then uh, the Elizabeth got everything in the inheritance. So, oh, no shit. so Jane got nothing. So she and just had to fucking. So then, the so then Elizabeth and Oramel agreed to keep her on as a housekeeper, basically. So they were going to let her stay there just like she had been, but she uh, felt like slighted because now she was going to be the housekeeper to this girl that I grew up with. Or the it's same. like, well, then to, move out and go do your own thing. Right, we're I supposed mean, to be sisters. Why are you treating me like this? I mean, I know they're, but still, I know it's fucked up. Terrible. 
It's fucked up. I mean, I thought that Elizabeth was making a good gesture to not kick her out, you know, even oh, though yeah. she could have. I mean, she wasn't had any. She had she no right to got be out, though, like. 87, 1887. Yeah, she winds up in 80, 1887. She's 33, and she begins to train as a nurse at the Cambridge Hospital there in Boston. Now, in those days, nursing was very similar to the life of a nun. Very, very strict rules to follow, right. places to be, working fucking constantly, uh, almost no days off ever. Like ever. it's fucking crazy. And a lot of them, they were mostly Catholic and shit, or not Catholic, but they were Protestant or whatever. Yeah, I mean the nurses were from all different faiths, but uh, but of course Jane was Catholic. Now I don't know if she was practicing. Probably not, because I'm sure Mrs. Not, Toppin not, wouldn't yeah. have let that happen. You definitely are not going. To, yeah. So no. I don't know what she was doing for that. But uh, she was described as brilliant and terrible at the same time. That's kind of an interesting <laughs> way to describe somebody. Uh, she was well-liked and very cheerful, which is, of course, where the Jolly the Jane comes jo from. Yeah, I like all her patients and shit loved her, which is, yeah. which is nuts, dude. It is. It's crazy to think, right? Um, but, you know, she was, you know, very, very bubbly, uh, very, very pleasant, but the... Her peers hated her, but the doctors thought she was just amazing. And I thought the Jolly Jane thing was kind of a funny, like, media thing after the killings after the became killings, a thing. They probably It's kind of like up, a like, goof, like you'd call a big dude tiny, you know? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but it wasn't. It was no, because a, she was genuinely, genuinely like, jolly, you know? fucking patients loved her. And like you said, the, uh, the doctors thought she was great because she was, like, top top grades in her classes and everything and just right. surpassing what she had to do. So the doctors love her. The other nurses are like, fuck this bitch. Fucking yeah. goody two shoes over here. Fucking yeah. Man, good, good at killing. Now, uh, speaking of killing Chris, she gets a little bit miffed when she's engaged. She finally finds a guy. Yeah. Too bad. And he leaves her at the fucking altar, dude. That's fuck pretty fucking too. low. Like I finally found somebody. So, Imagine that she's felt like shit all her life. Finally finds a guy gets lifted up. Totally thinks the world's awesome finally and changed. And then that happens it's like fucking tool. I build you up just to bring you down, dude. Like, why would you do that to a person? It's brutal, I mean, man. And that would fuck anybody up. But yeah. this person is very fragile. And this Chris like is what she said. I'm going to start started killing this motherfuckers. Shit. Don't so now care. we're going to get into this nastiness here. Now, when she was training to be a nurse, she was obsessed with death. Uh, fellow students would say, and instructors as well, um, that she would love to talk about how a body was frozen in death, but yet the decay would start immediately, and she was like obsessed with this. So, I mean, it's one thing to be interested in your work, but, you know, that was like to the point where these people were creeped out. She should have fucking stuck to writing death metal lyrics, man. Shit. Probably. Been all right with yeah, that. Yeah, carcass Fuck. with all the medical terminology. <laughs> the yeah. <laughs> fucking goddamn <laughs> county medical examiners. <laughs> right. Totally. You ever listen to those guys? Yes. Holy shit, Fucking dude. brutal, man. <laughs> Another sign of her future serial killing was petty theft. So this is what pissed her co-workers off, yeah. Chris, because she gets she busted quite a few times, stealing from fellow students, stealing from the hospital, stealing from the school, wherever the fuck she was. She from was a the, fucking klepto, man. From the dead patients, yeah. stealing their shit. Like yeah, that. stealing jewelry, clothes. I mean, she's fucked up, okay? Um, but she is known as a bullshitter, making up stories. So that'd be another reason to fucking stand yeah, her nobody ass. Nobody likes her. She was talking about the czar of Russia had offered her a nursing job, but you're working what? here in Boston. Yeah, so why like, didn't you fuck fucking take it, go? dude? Go on, uh, get it. She also would talk about how her father was like some famous this or that. And <laughs> they're like, dude, really? Your father's a fucking drunk. You know, he, I don't know what he did after the drop the kids off yeah he the, just disappeared dude yeah like, nobody heard much about him but you assume he just fucking drank himself to death right you know? and she was a narc too 
She was, <laughs> man. She loved to fucking tattle, man. Yeah, you tell on anybody for random things. Hey, this is like the brown nose at work, dude. Like, hey. Right. I mean, guy. nobody wants that motherfucker around. No, nobody. nobody. So she was fucking hated by the people that worked with her. Uh, but she was good at kissing ass to the right people. But because of the stealing and stuff, she did kind of bounce around different hospitals. And this is like back then, like uh, the hospitals didn't want to report shit like that and get a fucking bad name. So they just right. fire you, fucking get the fuck going, right, get the not report it to anybody or no right. other hospital. So that's how she was able to go from. That's right, true. I just quit that hospital. I need a job here or whatever. Right. Yeah, I mean, being a nurse, she was pretty much able to work anywhere because that's such a sought after, still such a sought after uh, thing. Good job to to get into. That's for damn sure. Uh, but you know, very very interesting. Now she had her favorite patients, um, usually the ones that were the, the most sickest. ill. Oh man! And it was during her residency she said that she began to experiment with morphine and atropine. I'm, okay. a, I'm not even sure what atropine is, personally. Okay, atropine is the opposite of morphine. Okay. So you, she would bring them really down with the morphine into a coma and, and then, then shock them with, them with, with atropine, atropine to bring them back up and then back down and up and down. And this shit okay. could go on for days. And she was obsessed with this shit. Just watching them so close Measuring to with a ruler their fucking pupils and writing shit down. I mean, she was fucked, okay? So, and you got to experiment with somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what she did. And she fucked with the morphine and the atropine. And she would eventually give them enough atropine that would kill them. And then they would just die. And But, you know, they were on death's door. So she was able to make but it look she legit. She did say help know? the helpless people. So I Right. Mean. So she was also known to use strychnine, which is rat poison. Um, and she definitely had a God complex. She got off on the power, which is similar to how the male serial killers are. She exhibits, she's one of the, to me, one of the most interesting cases only because she kills as a female would kill as well as the way a male right. kills. In this case with the, the power, like I have dominance shit, 100%. that's certainly more male, you know. Um, not to say that females like fucking Eileen Warnos, right? But, but still, not that, that the was, common. This is different, not like, than Eileen Warnos. Totally Warnos. different. Like, this is straight up. I feel like I'm God kind of thing. I yeah, think Eileen Warnos. I could kill just, you I, I for control at any second. Yeah, yeah. So very, very weird. Now, Chris, she was also really good at changing stuff in the patient records. So these doctors are fucking confused, right? <laughs> Dude. I mean, you're trying to read these charts and all the shit's all wrong. And... This motherfucker's like, wait, what do you mean I got to take his arm off? His arm's already off. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Fuck, dude? <laughs> yeah. Or how is his blood pressure 470 over right? 22, you know? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> if I could change some shit, just like they're in there for like... <laughs> the flu or something and next thing you know their chart says their or their record says they're in there for tuberculosis it's like so sure. now they're gonna change shit up yeah so she was just devious man now i also read that when the police finally got a hold of her shit her medical book showed excessive wear on the pages that dealt with opiates like morphine so the book was like worn in on those, those sections, <laughs> multiple, not just one book, multiple right. that's fucking, books. That's putting all... in research for real, man. Yeah, that's putting like. into work there. <laughs> uh, but she loved using morphine to make her patients die in conjunction with the atropine. So now Jane would later tell the police that she got a sexual thrill from patients dying. And this, Chris, I looked it up. Erotophonophol. Erotophonophilia. Erot <laughs> All right, I like it. It's weird. <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, this is when you're sexually aroused by watching someone die. That is just so fucked up. She told them it became, quote, a habit in her life, end quote, and that she got, quote, delirious enjoyment, <laughs> end quote, from it. From so, watching people die. So slowly. fucked up. So fucked up. I mean... 
There's certain ways people got to get off as fetishes, but I, I don't guess. think this is the right way to no, do it. No, no. I mean, not as <laughs> Fuck, violent man. as Carla Faye Tucker with the ice pick. No, but not at all. But damn. still getting I mean, sexually not like off. Her, not like the fucking cage match tonight, David Parker Ray. Like there's certain things he had to do to get off, I think. That's true. I ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> now, there was a survivor, Chris, of uh, Jane Toppin. Her name was Amelia Finney. She was get like in her 30s or 40s, she was given morphine uh, liquid and uh, Jane climbed into bed with her and was measuring her pupils up close, Ugh. kissing and fondling her in the hospital bed, which is While fucked. she's slowly dying. And she came out of it and she wondered if it was a dream. And then later, uh, when Jane was busted, she came she's forward like, and said, this happened to me, yeah. man. And she said the only way she was saved, she was giving her another dose, which would have probably oh, killed her. Right. But somebody came in the room. And so J Jane, Jane immediately to took off. Yeah. And so she she thankfully survived it. So the only known person to actually know, you know, knowingly survive a Jane Toppin fucking case. So pretty fucked up. Uh, now, Chris, she bounced around from hospital to hospital, and as you mentioned earlier, private nursing, where she made some good money, five times more than a, a woman at the time would make a week, which was, she was making 25 bucks, so a woman making only $5 a week Jeez. back then. So she's making good money, and she she's never balling, stopped yeah. fucking killing. Somehow, these doctors didn't expect, you know, suspect anything with all this shit going on. In her wake, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, she's like, especially like I was saying, the private practices, she's just in people's homes, man. Right. So she's taking care of these people. Yeah, but that one family, she killed them all. I mean, yeah. one by one, killed the whole fucking family. And nobody fucking... No, That's what nobody fucking did her in. It. That so, one, but, she, but she's like she's a crazy. High, she's that high class nurse that's done a lot of shit. And everybody in her field, like the doctors and everything, trust her. So if they were yeah. asked, just like, no, Jane's a good nurse. Like, if she says that's what happened, that's what happened. Oh, yeah. She had glowing recommendations from all these doctors right. that loved her. So, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But still, the private practice, man, you get all the victims at your leisure. Right. And nobody really watching you. Uh, 1899, she would kill Elizabeth, Chris, the stepsister that she wanted. Oh, she wanted to kill her, so her whole bad. life anyway. Yeah, because she had everything she didn't have. She was married and kids, stable financially, nice house. So she winds up killing her, and she does it, of course, with her fucking cocktails that she would give people. Right. Because they were on like a vacation, and Oramel was just, you know, hoped, you know, wife had a good trip, and they went off he should have known better yeah going with jane and yeah so jane winds up getting her sick and then of course you know dies and so he's distraught he moves his sister into the house she was 77 um jane decides she needs to fucking yep. go because she doesn't want anybody in her fucking way nope. so she poisons her and kills her and then she gets oramel sick in hopes that she would like nurse him back, back to, to health. health and be like, hey, uh, I love you. Or yeah. Whatever. And he finds out about this shit <laughs> after being sick for a while. Like, fuck you. It throws her out of the fucking house. The fuck out of here. So he was just sick of this bullshit. And I mentioned the Davis family, four of them. She killed them one by one until they were all gone. And she like took over this summer cottage they had. It was fuck pretty it. fucked up, man. The way she got away with shit, dude. She was slick, smooth. man. Kind of H.H. Smooth. Holmes smooth, you right? know? Right? <laughs> so those two could have been a couple, I guess. Um, after Oramel kicked her out um, is when, you know, apparently she also was, was trying to get him to come to her, you know, that she was so good for him, and he's just like, fuck you, get away from me. Uh, the police, though, are on to her over the Davis family deaths, and all these dead patients wherever she goes. Everywhere she's at. And like, come on, man. Right. It can't be a coincidence. Like, No. And that's why the Davis family, because they got money, they hire the famous, this famous toxicologist in the country. And he winds up getting the, all the bodies exhumed. He examines them and finds lethal doses of arsenic, 
morphine and atropine in their bodies. So boom. Okay. A little overboard, ain't you there? A little bit. <laughs> so old Jane, Jolly Jane gets busted, charged with murder, and public enemy number one, Chris. It was big in the newspapers. You know, this would be a pretty big story, man. Yeah, definitely. I think, uh, though, that he got more numbers, but she got up on Jim Jones with the amount of poisons used. <laughs> like, Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. Jones had cyanide. She's got arsenic, morphine, <laughs> atropine, whatever And else. no flavor aid. And no flavor aid. Just like, <laughs> you take it like this. This is how you get fucked up, man. <laughs> yeah, but the whole bringing them down and up, like, that's so fucking warped, man. Yeah, that's is. just scary shit. Uh, but this is a big case in the newspapers for obvious reasons. Because at the time, I mean, most women who killed were poisoners and they typically did it like revenge, like if the husband had an affair yeah, like, type oh, of thing or to kill somebody for money, for you know, life reasons, insurance. Yeah. That was typical for if you had a female murderer. She's just doing it because she wants to do it. Well, she yeah, she's just doing it because she wants people out of her way so she can have. So that's one of the ways where she does kill like a female for monetary gain. So right. she does do it. For the sexual pleasure, which would be very male, and for material things. So she's kind of right in both. The middle I mean, yeah. it's really a very interesting case. Um, and with over 30 confessed murders, um, you know, the case was definitely not, you know, typical. So that's why it got so much attention. So very, very interesting case, I think, of talking about serial killers all the time. And this is a really different one because of the fact that she seemed to kill from both, both almost angles, would seem yeah. like it was different people. Um, Chris, Jane would tell the police, quote, don't blame me, blame my nature. <laughs> you could see somebody saying that on a YouTube video. Yeah, don't blame me, blame my nature. Yep. Um, <laughs> she showed no empathy to any of her victims and tried to say they were old and would have died of something soon anyway. Yeah, I love the quote, don't blame me, blame my... I mean, lots of people could say that, but... Right. I feel like, other than try, like trying to help somebody deal with their pain, it's like Kevorkian, the doctor fucking... But she's a nurse just, like, killing the patient, I think. That's fucking yeah. like crazy. I mean, Kevorkian did it with their consent. That's so right. That's with a their big con difference. That's a huge yeah. difference. Like, right. Their consent, they're like, no, we want you to help you. But Right. I don't know, but she showed no empathy. Didn't no. care. A no, bit. because not all of them were, like, on death's door. That no. one lady that lived was in her 30s or 40s. Her fucking sister. Yeah, it was just, like, I, fucked up. Yeah, and like you said, her sister and then that whole family. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, they're going to die of something soon, but why don't you let them die on their own then? Yeah, I mean, it's it's just such a fucking crazy one. Um, at the time in Massachusetts and in most parts of the country, if not all the country, the standard for claiming insanity was much different than today. Uh, Jane was actually found not guilty by reason of insanity, but in today's court, she would have been found guilty oh, definitely. because she obviously knew that the, what she was doing was wrong. Yeah, you know, you can't because she was covering shit up. So if she was truly insane, she would have been like Richard Chase, you know, running around. What did he kill a dog and drink its blood or some <laughs> yeah. fucked up shit? Put the baby dog in the shit off the fucking lawn. And, yeah. Yeah. So that's insane. OK, <laughs> this is not legally but back then it was. Yeah. So she gets sent to a mental hospital basically for life. Uh, she's 48 in 1902 is when she was sentenced. And she led a pretty quiet life as a patient. Um, I'm sure she was having multiple orgasms, though. Everybody as anybody died. died man. Like, I also saw that she wanted to try and help the staff there, too. Oh, really? Could you imagine that? Oh, like, God. You got, wait, you're in here for... <laughs> wait, no. <laughs> That's like when they they told Tim, back when we played one of those Pontiac outdoor parties, right. They with the band keg was behind our merch table, and they <laughs> handed Tim the, the keg. Uh, the, the tapper? The, the tapper. <laughs> and Tim was just looking at me when they left, and he's like, do they have any fucking idea what they've just done? Like, I have control 
over this whole fucking cat. You know, he's shaking this thing about. I'm like, dude, like, relax. You know, like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's what that reminds me of. Right. That's what that reminds me of. So, very, very crazy, uh, psycho fucking bitch. She dies at the age of 84 in 1938. I did read. Uh, this was in Peter Vronsky's book that she would sometimes tell the nurses at the hospital, quote, get some morphine, dearie, and we'll have fun <laughs> watching them all die. Fucking Jesus God Christ, almighty. Man. <laughs> Even Holy in her shit. 80s, man. What the fuck? God like, damn. Oh, chill the fuck out. Want to watch these motherfuckers die? Man, most of them are probably <laughs> younger than she was. When oh, she I'm sure. Died. Yeah. yeah, like when, It's so when she fucking crazy, them. man. Wow, so Jane Toppin, very crazy one for Fuck. sure. Chris, anything you want to add to this shit? No, not offhand, dude. Fucking other than bitches fucking batshit crazy. I know, dude. That's that's a good way of putting it. Not I think so for sure. Now, I did my research for this one with a couple of different documentaries I saw on YouTube. Not a lot. That wasn't uh, a whole lot of docs for sure. The Serial Killers podcast was okay. Chris, what was the one you said you listened to? Uh, Most Notorious. Most Notorious had a, had a decent yeah, one it was on her. Good. Um, so there's not a lot out there, but I'll tell you, the Peter Vronsky, uh, we've had him on the show before. He's, he's a friend of the show, Canadian. Uh, awesome dude but his book female serial killers how and why women become monsters is phenomenal he had a whole section on jane toppin so hell yeah to peter veronsky because like i said the wikipedia Always podcasts were weak but i definitely was happy you know fortunate enough to have the book and was able to find some stuff in my own collection so right. peter veronsky um once so again yeah, we've <laughs> talked about him all the time with that other book, The Serial Killers, The Method and Madness of Monsters. Um, that one we've used constantly. All right, uh, but there is stuff out there. So if you want to look, we've given you some options. Now, Chris, next week, you want to talk about a fucked up individual. This one from Germany, man, old Fritz Hanka. <laughs> What the fuck, man? It looks like somebody hit him in the face with like a two by four <laughs> like ten times. Okay. They smashed the his shit out. His nose is all smashed in, his eyes are all fucked up. <laughs> he is one of the ugliest motherfuckers. He's killing prostitutes though, Chris, in the seventies. But what's he doing with the fucking bodies, man? Oh, he keeps them in his apartment, man. Yeah, hacks them up yep. into little pieces. Yep. Just cuts them all up, fucking killed at least four, but he yeah. put like a false wall up at his uh, his yeah, living yeah. room to be slick. Yeah, and, and he, he had like, multiple bodies. Take their in there. teeth out to fucking. He preferred them because like dental records and shit. Right. Right. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. So he also liked the toothless women though because he oh, didn't yeah, want to be yeah. injured during oral sex. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it served two purposes. So this is a gruesome one next week. So Fritz Honka, that's going to be a good one. He's been on the list for a bit. I stumbled on a documentary, and I was just like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> right. And then he said, he also said that Jack the Ripper was telling him to do it. So, All right. All right, so, cool. So anyway, <laughs> and we did a good fake commercial oh my for that God, one. Dude. <laughs> yeah, so we've done a few. We got one tonight for you that's good. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, but we did the Fritz Honka one was yeah, funny. Oh my God, dude. So we've done our fair share of murdering tonight, Chris. I know it was weird without Joey, but we yeah. got through it, man. Yeah, we totally got through that shit. And so uh, I right, hear man. that train. We're going to board that 920 to Danbury, Check Chris. Danbury. Talk about our boy CK. Yes, we are. Let's get our fucking metal on. Known the world over as the master of metal, the crusher of posers, and murder metal mayhem's knower of all things metal, hailing from Wild Man Street in Danbury, Connecticut, Standing at six feet of brutal, punishing madness, weighing in at 220 pounds of poser pulverization. The one, the only, toughest bastard on the planet, Chris C.K. Corex! And that he was. Yeah, that he was. This one's for you, CK. Great metal motherfucker, for sure. We thought, uh, as we mentioned in the intro, 
that uh, we would do CK justice by, you know, uh, featuring him in the metal segment tonight instead of a band and kind of talk about, you know, what's happened and what's coming up and and how this is going to change things a little bit. So uh, we thought we would do that eventually here in the next two or three months, maybe we would like to put together a cool uh, total homage to CK. Yeah. A special bonus episode with maybe interviews with his wife, Laura, some CK pieces, you know, from stuff he's done over these years. So we want to do that, but we just can't do it right now. It's too soon, but we will. Uh, So again, we just thought we would talk about CK, talk about CK. Now, we we had CK on Chris back in the beginning. It was after episode I think four or five he came yeah. on, but it was in a different, a different capacity. Way, yeah, kind of because he has a like y'all know he's got huge fucking music collection in general, right? But like huge vinyl collections. So he was when he started like said he come get on and do a segment called I can't remember what we called it at the time, but uh. Yeah, just talk about new old releases that just came out on vinyl or new releases that, that are on vinyl, just vinyl specifically, not just metal in general, but right. specifically vinyl. So, And then it kind of grew from there, you know. Then he started doing, you know, a feature for a band, you know, right. and do as like he, people would know from now uh, what fucking, he was doing. It blossomed from there. He did, I mean, kind of At the time, we kind of mixed both of them together because there'd be like... One week he's like, yeah, I'm doing this vinyl thing this week because this just came out. This is fucking awesome, sweet fucking cover right. that whole thing. And then next week maybe he's like, hey, there's this fucking band that I just really want to talk about. So it kind of just like merged itself together and yeah. like just awesomeness. Yeah, and back then, remember, Chris, he was only in the metal segment. Yeah, that was it. Just It was, it was a, a year or two ago. Where he wanted to come on in the Mayhem segment and stay on through the and whole rest like, of the show. Yeah, dude. So Definitely. yeah, so we uh, we did this. Now, of course, you guys know that CK had been battling uh, colon cancer for nine years. So a lot of people would ask me, uh, not a lot of people, but people would sometimes ask me, you know, um, you know, hear like noises and stuff. And, you know, this guy right. was struggling at times to just be able to do what he did. So anytime you heard any, you know, noise like a like a gurgle or a anything. gurgle or, or a breathing heavy or I, something. I, I had somebody one time say something to me about like to only get the piece of candy out of his mouth. I'm like, dude, no, you don't understand. He's yeah. on all this medication. He gets dry, dry mouth, cotton mouth, real fucking easy. He has to have it right to talk like that. Like, yeah, I mean, he, it was tough for him to do what he did. So, but I think an overwhelming majority of people that listened to CK just, just like they, loved him. Right, loved him. Understood everything going on. It was like this yeah. motherfucker right here. Yeah, you got to give it up for a guy that knows he's up in a battle because when he first went to the hospital for that uh, uh, issue, the doctors gave him a 1% chance to live Yeah, through that the surgery. Nine fucking years ago, so come yeah. on. Yeah, so CK was the baddest motherfucker, and that's why we call him the great metal motherfucker. But it evolved slowly at the beginning, again, just doing vinyl. Then he started doing bands. And like Chris said, kind of bouncing back and forth. And, you know, like any podcast, I think, or or radio program or anything, TV show, Progress. you have to find kind of that right mix. Yeah, the niche. And then once you've got it, then it's like, okay. And like doing Murder Metal Mayhem, I mean, when we do the three segments – the way we do it, it just feels right, but it didn't start out like that. It's you fucking know? weird we're talking about this right now the same way we started, just me and you. It's fucking weird. It is weird. <laughs> that is true. Because, yeah, without Joey here, Joey's been here now almost two years, Yeah, like God which damn. is crazy to think. So, yeah, it's just, uh, it is odd that we're having this conversation about CK, and it's just you and me and Joey just randomly gets stuck yeah, just... in Indiana with a blown water pump in his car, so... It's really strange, but um, what about, uh, you know, the listener feedback, Chris? I mean, we've usually got a lot of really good CK oh, man. comments, man. 
like people would always talk about CK, like the bands that they would uh, hear his him talk about, and they're like never heard of, and they go check him out, and they're coming back with like, holy shit, dude. I totally checked out such and such a band, and I'm so glad that you recommended this, talked about it, fucking been jamming them ever since I heard you talk about them, and we got that a lot. And also, like, whenever CK was having any kind of medical issue, and we let the listeners know or whatever, he, or he would himself, like, look, this is what's going on in my life. My fuckers come back fucking wishing him well, fucking oh, yeah. all, constantly wishing him well, like, hey, man, we hope you fucking pull through, you got this, like, yeah, and what about his number one fan that um, Elizabeth's daughter down there oh, in Arkansas? Oh yeah, Rachel, dude. Yeah, Rachel. She's uh, six years six old. Six years old. She might be seven now. Her but mom yeah. only let her listen to the metal segment, and only after she cleaned it yeah, up. Only after she edited and cleaned up. And but that, her then, biggest fan, dude. Her like her CK's biggest fan, dude. She fucking loved CK. Like loved it. Like, did you see what? Uh, Elizabeth said that. Yeah, she said when she graduates or first when she gets graduates first, first grade, grade, CK will let her, let her she, out. She'll be able to see her graduate. Oh, yeah, CK will be able to see she's her gonna graduate. She's going to throw up gonna the, throw horns. the horns. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. So that is just super cool. And so, yeah, fans and listeners sending in that kind of stuff. I had some come to the table at the Dark History Convention just like, man, I can't believe it. And the thing is, is we all knew... I mean, obviously, we're all terminal, right? Right, but obviously. CK, you know, we knew that it was a ter- he had a terminal diagnosis. So it was just hoping against hope that they would come up with some kind of something to right. help him. But, you know, he was not able to because it started with the colon cancer and then it got worse and the tumor kept moving around. The last tumor, I believe, was on his spine. And he was not able to feel from, like, the waist down. I mean, he was just really struggling. And he had been doing this for probably about the past year. So those of you listening, thinking about how much this guy's been through in the past year, then the hospice was called in about a month ago. So that's usually not a good sign. He wasn't eating much. I was talking to him once a week still. There were a couple of weeks, though, he just couldn't do it. Um, So... You know, it's tough. I mean, even though we knew it was coming, especially after hospice was called, it still uh, just hit like a, you know, a sledgehammer when I got the word, you know. when When you text me, I was on my way to work, literally Michael's in the car with me. I like get the text. I'm like, motherfucker, dude. I'm yeah. like straight up. Michael's just like, what's up? I'm like, dude. And he, he knew he's like, CK. I was like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, I like he knew. It was weird. Yeah, that is weird. So it's a very, very strange thing to go through, losing a friend. And CK was just one of a kind and a true metalhead. I mean, and and loved a lot of other types of music as well. You know, you and him used to joke around about some of the stuff you guys like outside of metal. And he was just a a great friend. And, you know, he was my beta reader uh, for years for my writing, which means he was reading the rough drafts and kind of giving me feedback right out of the box. So he was very helpful, wrote shit, the novel. I wrote two novels and then three short story collections with him Beta reading doing that for yeah. me. So, uh, yeah, so it's tough to see uh, him go for a multitude of reasons, you know. But his influence on this show is just huge. I mean, yeah, the murder is the feature, but there's also metal and mayhem, and we have a he lot was, of listeners that like he was all the huge parts. Part. Once he started doing his shit, he was the main metal. He was the feature of the metal. Song. Right, and that's why the intro is the way it is. And we're going to modify the intro a little bit, but we're going to keep it very similar. So, um, you know, that's the one thing that you know we wanted to kind of decide. And as we knew that CK was nearing the end. We had a discussion, Joey, Chris, and I, about what we were going to do, you know, when either he was gone or Or whether he was just not able to do it anymore. anymore. Because I asked him, you know, uh, when he was starting to get sick or sicker here recently, I said, dude, you just got to do me a favor and you got to tell me when you can't do it anymore. I don't want to have to tell you that, look, bro, like you need to let me know. So yeah. please do that. And that's and exactly did. what he that's did. Exactly what he did. Yeah. 
that episode that week, uh, that's Factory exactly episode. what he did. I can't, and, I can't remember the murder thing, but I know he did Fear Factory that yeah, last. that was the Dark History episode. That was, yeah. Yeah, so that was the last episode uh, that he did. And then uh, he missed the one after that. And so, uh, you know, w- but he knew he wasn't able to do it. And Laura, his wife, said that, you know, and we knew this, you know, how committed he was to it, how much he loved doing it. He looked forward to it. And so as sad as this whole thing is, the one thing we know is that we gave him three years, three of really good that years. He enjoyed. Loved Looking it. Right. Loved and it. so we made his life better in difficult times. And I was able to get out there three times to see him uh, 2017, 2018, and 2019 there you in September, uh, each of those years. And um, it was good to be able to go. We went to a Yankee game together. I yep. brought Alex brought out Alex there. Went, yep. Jenny and I went out there. I went out there first time by myself. And so I have those good, positive memories. I know Laura said they weren't going to have like a big funeral. He didn't want any of that. So it's just a graveside service um, in Bethel, Connecticut, where he was uh, raised. So uh, he's going to be in the plot with his parents and brother. They have a family plot. That's where he's going to be. And his remains are cremated. Plot wild, man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, if you're ever in Bethel, Connecticut, go to the St. Mary Cemetery and go visit CK. Or go to Wild Man and just scream up and down the street. Fucking right. <laughs> maybe get in on a soccer game or something, or volleyball games. Volleyball game. games. <laughs> so, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's tough to, you know, to feel like we did CK justice. But I would like to get into more of his of his life uh talk about his music he was a drummer played in some local bands obviously lover of music but he was a lot more than that you know he was a you know had a a good job he was a worked for a a big grocery store chain as a store manager yeah his wife and and he had a great uh relationship so he was a lot more than the great metal motherfucker but to us you know that's what we know him as, but just yes. like anybody, he's got a lot of layers and a lot of, a lot of different sides. So I'd like to do this a more, you know, uh, right when we're able to put it together and get some people on. So yeah, definitely. So we will do that. But yeah, CK, just a huge influence on the show and a lot of people. You know, and I always loved when I could get a band over on CK that he hadn't heard wait, of wait, before. Who's that? Like- got to check them out i did that to him with angela sapatrida had no idea who they were um uh Corsus. there's been a few that i got him with which is always like yeah you right. know if you could get a band that the great metal motherfucker had like, not yeah, heard, of heard of before of who says like I'm, I'm a winner right now yeah <laughs> i felt pretty good about that but yeah ck did turn a lot of people onto a lot of bands but well it was good that when we were able to reciprocate and give him some good stuff. So, all right. Uh, anything, Chris, you wanted to add on CK? No, I think we've done good for a short one. I'll just wait until we do the CK episode. Yeah, and plus Joey's not here too. That yeah, was exactly. one of the bummers need, about this. Is we, we wanted need Joey, Joey to talk too, man. Yeah, because Joey had some things he wanted to say about CK, and so so we'll do it. Uh, but like I said, we just need a little bit of time to pull that together. Um, but, uh, our plan going forward is that what we're going to do, Chris, we decided is we're going to each one of us every third week we do one, like rotate. Yeah. So like I'll do a band and Joey does band and you do a band just yeah. rotate around. So or unless like say, Hey, I got this band. I really want to do next week. Is it cool? Fucking we might jump around sure. like that, but rotation is our, uh, plan to head go forward with the segment yeah so keep it within the three of us and just rotate it around um you know there's no replacing the great metal motherfucker but we could certainly you know continue the tradition and pick in some good bands i've already got my first band picked i'm anxious to oh, i got a couple to things that i was out. mentioning to michael about and one of them wasn't even a whole band i think it was just an album you want to do yeah. the first one no no <laughs> <laughs> well, that's next week shit <laughs> we yeah, could talk about it yeah we we'll talk, talk about it we'll figure it out 
Uh, all right. Well, uh, what have uh, what have you been listening to here lately, Chris? Uh, a band you just mentioned earlier, fucking Archspire. Fucking oh yeah, yeah. They got new shit out. This fucking bad as fuck. Like you said, it's very talented fucking musicians. Yeah, man. wicked like, skills. Oh that's my for God, sure. So good. I've been listening to that. Um, Twelve Foot Ninja. I fucking love Twelve Foot Ninja, man. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are so good. I was listening to them today too. I don't know. And other than that, some podcasts here and there and just random music. Right. But those are the main two things I've been listening to lately. That's cool. Like within cool. the past couple of days is our Spire and 12 Foot Ninja. That's cool. I've been listening to the fuck out of some Exodus. I wanted to get pumped up. My son was cranking up the Tempo of the Damned album, which is wicked, uh, when we were coming back from the convention. It got yeah. me kind of thinking, man, new Exodus is coming out. I need to go get some... You know, playing some of the older albums, just can't get fired up for it. So I wound up going on a kick. I picked the four albums that Rob Duke sings on. on, And God damn, fucking badass. But I love Steve Souza too. Paul Bailoff I like, but not as much as the others, uh, the other two. So I know a lot of people think the Paul Bailoff, the first album, is like the The antipathy. the 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 zenith of thrash metal albums i wouldn't necessarily agree with that but that's just a style thing but right. rob dukes and the band re-recorded that album uh so rob dukes is a hell of a singer i dig it uh, and that's what i've been listening to just a lot of exodus Fucking some podcasts right. like you mentioned and a new writing podcast i stumbled upon so uh been Fucking been it. just kind of listen to a little bit of everything all right, uh, the 666 Club, Chris, our yes, Patreon uh, supporters. Get that freaking goddamn merch on cheap. You get the uh, episodes fucking early as soon as they're fucking done and uploaded. You get them day early. You get right all that, man. Yeah, it's a good deal. Three bucks a month is all it is. Patreon.com slash Murder Metal Mayhem. And I'll link to it in the episode description if you want to do that. It helps the us 666 out. 666 Club. That's right. Uh, also, we got those T-shirts, Murder Metal Mayhem T-shirts with the wicked Jeff Gaither design. We're all zombies on the front, CK's, it. CK's on it. on it, dude. Hell so, yeah. man, you definitely want to get one with CK, that's for sure. So I'll link to that as well And we got the, the artwork. Episode. We should get some stickers made with that on there. We should, man. The, I really love that art piece, that's for sure. All right, well, we've done plenty of metal tonight. CK is as metal as it gets. Fucking A. Uh, Chris, what the fuck do we need to do, man? Let's get our mayhem on. Are you tired of being cooped up in the house during this pandemic? Do the holidays got you down because you can't see your grandma in Florida? Well, you can play Press the Witch and just press those blues away. Here at Built in Madly, we've come up with a great way to have some fun with the family by picking one person to be pressed to death with thousands of pounds of boulders. Make them die before the buzzer goes off and get a bonus. Swim the witch card, where you can tie up and toss an extra player in the bathtub for bonus points. Hey, Santa, can you get me pressed the witch for Christmas? Of course, Timmy. You've been a good little fucker this year. (laughs) Gee golly, thanks, Santa. You're the shit. Get Press the Witch by Bilton Madley this Christmas and press your stress away. Boulder sold separately. Oh my god! <laughs> Boulder sold. Wow, that separately. was a real team effort, man. <laughs> Joey doing the narration, and then you doing the little kid. <laughs> that was so funny. We tried to get a listener to call us With right before kid, the yeah, show. But... Didn't work out. <laughs> To see if we get oh a little boy God. to call us and do the voice, but then Chris stepped it up, and then I did Santa and oh, had shit. the bells and everything funny. going I'm off. Dying, so dude. that was a lot of fun. Always love doing those. <laughs> Before that, though, Dust Bolt. I love those guys. German thrash, uh, just killer. 
Uh, the song was called Turn to Gray. I really like those guys. They got a new album coming out, uh, I think, early next year. So anxious to check that out. I don't think I've ever heard them. Yeah, I saw them open for Exodus once at the Joliet, yeah, and no they sure. were like really, really good. I really liked them. And then I wound up checking them out and forgot about them for a while. There's one album I'm not crazy about, but the other ones I love. So I'm hoping oh, yeah. I get more of what I love next time. We'll see. All right, uh, mayhem, Chris. You got any I, mayhem today? I don't think I got any mayhem. I this don't week. really I... either, offhand. So I know sometimes we don't, and sometimes right. we got three or four mayhem stories. So yeah, you never sometimes know. the mayhem gets out of fucking control. But... It does, but we get some other mayhem-like things to talk about. I had a really good time at the Dark History and Horror Convention. I know you and Joey weren't able to make it. That was uh, October twenty-third of twenty-one, and it was awesome. I uh, got some goodies. I uh, got this uh, fucking the Ed Gein, Gein shirt. shirt. Wearing, yeah. I got the two true crime figurines there. Got the, the uh, Burn Bundy yeah, burn, the burn. Dude, it's in like flames, Bundy on fire, dude. Which and is it fucking looks like awesome. Bundy on fire. It does. <laughs> and then the other one is a Zodiac, Zodiac with the Zodiac costume like and then the, hat, the and the then the newspaper behind him. Yeah, it's pretty fucking sick. Yeah, it looks really cool with the a cipher on it too. So uh, pretty cool stuff. Got to see some friends. John Borowski was there. Steve G and Angelo. Uh, Donnie Weimer, our buddy Killer from Killer Culture, Culture Shop. Uh, he's the shit. Uh, David Thibodeau, the Waco survivor there. David yeah, Koresh is drummer. Yeah. Uh, David, David was there. Drummer. He uh, <laughs> signed my book that I forgot to get him to sign last time. And Sue Rovins, the author, was there. So it was really cool. Also great to see some listeners and readers that came by the table. And big, big thanks to my son, Joe, for helping me out. All because long, dude, it would have been tough, that. especially I still have a weight restriction on this right hand with the carpal tunnel. And so I would have been had a hard I would have had a hard time with the books. Yeah, and if you were by yourself, it'd been hard to fucking go visit other vendors. Yeah, that was too, nice so. to be able to walk around a couple times, yeah, buy a few definitely. things, support the cause. Brian Ward, of course, was there running around. He's the guy putting it together. So thanks to Brian. And uh, we love doing that. So hopefully next time we do it, it'll be all three of us there uh, at the booth. Uh, also, Creation of Chaos 3, my latest book. It is uh, out there if you it's can get audible, it. Audible, dude. Audible if you want to do the audio book or iTunes or Amazon. Um, you could buy it locally. If you're in Bloomington, Illinois, at the Painted Wraith Curiosity Shop, and I'll be back there uh, sometime early next year when Deeper Than Dead comes out, uh, they're going to have me back. Speaking of Deeper Than Dead, Chris, I'm on part nine. There's only oh. ten parts. I'm on part nine now. It's coming together. The artwork yeah, you, I, I showed you. I was going to say, you showed, just showed me the artwork for it, dude. Really oh wicked. Oh, my God, dude. Brian yeah. Usual killing it as Yeah, well. Brian, Brian is Usual a killing it as usual. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, Brian is doing a great job. So it's coming together. I'm almost done with the rough draft and hoping to see it come out early 2022. So here in a few months. So uh, Blunt Force Press will be putting that one out. Um, also, my final appearance of the year for the author stuff will be at the Peoria Public Library in Illinois at the downtown uh, location. It's in a big auditorium. There's 20-something authors going to be there. Right on. So it's going to be a very, very big event. I'm going to be there Saturday, November 13th, 2021, and that is from 2 to 4. I always mention the year here lately because we have – Old episodes. Four years almost now yeah. of episodes. So people could listen to this and show up to something and be I like, what there. the fuck? So pay attention to that. All right. So killer cage match, Chris. We got, uh, yeah, we got 70 listeners. killers that we picked. 70 objects for them to fight Random with. Random fucking bullshit. <laughs> A lot of bullshit. Some funny ones. And then uh, 15 variables to make it interesting. So we got some listeners that picked some random numbers for us, Chris. Yeah, we got uh, Holly Joe Ziegler, we got Rebecca Boomsack, and we got Laura Colfax. Awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, Once thanks, again. ladies. Usually ladies doing this, so that's awesome. Thanks, ladies. We got an interesting matchup tonight, though, Chris. Who do we got yep. going at it? 
Once again, we got Zodiac Killer fucking making his uh, little ciphers and right. puzzles and whatnot. Right. <laughs> and we got that sick motherfucker, goddamn David Parker Ray, the toy box killer. Oh, whole, man. That is not a fun toy, but don't take your kids in that toy box. No, no. Fuck. Definitely not. <laughs> Uh, they're going to have a couple of objects to fight with, Chris. They're going to have a five-gallon bucket of hot coals. Yeah. And our favorite, a can of corn. Can of corn, right. and I'll be all right. So, <laughs> can of corn and five gal- a five-gallon bucket of hot coals, Chris, and the variable is what? Yeah, we got us a 10-foot-long boa, so. Oh. All right, then. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think, Chris? We got Zodiac and David Parker Ray in a cage fighting to the death with a five-gallon bucket of hot coals, a can of corn, and a 10-foot boa constrictor in the cage with him. So I feel like Zodiac's going to be all stalky and shit, and uh, David Parker Ray's going to fucking... Like, see him and be like, fuck this guy. And he's just going to grab that can of corn and just fucking chuck it at him, and bash him in the fucking head with oh, it, and knock shit. his shit out. And he's going to grab that boa constrictor. And being David Parker Ray, he's going to force it up the Zodiac's ass because that's oh. the kind of shit David Parker Ray does. Right. So, even then, without a video camera? Even without a video camera, he don't <laughs> care. And then just because he can, because he's got this dude like getting ass raped with a 10 foot snake, he's just randomly going to drop a hot coal randomly on his body just to oh, wow. make it that much worse. And ah. eventually the insides are going to get taken out by the snake. And David Parker Ray wins this one, unfortunately. Wow. Okay, then. I mean, I I don't know. You almost joeyed that one. <laughs> no. Almost, not quite, but almost. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, because we're not 100% sure who the fuck the Zodiac is or was, I, uh, you know, don't really know physically. I mean, David Parker Ray was an older dude. Right, yeah. Um, but still, um, I think it's very feasible. He's definitely much more hands-on. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't more. know what he would be like with a male, though, because he was always dominating oh, women. Oh, 100%. But that's just... So I don't know. I mean, the Zodiac... I mean, they did have those fucking orgy parties and shit. Like... Yeah, I mean, the Zodiac could have fucking, you know, stepped in there. I mean, he did have that one couple at Lake Berryessa that he hacked up. So yeah, he was pretty hands-on, too, at times. Of course, others was with the gun. So I don't know, man. I'm really torn on this one, but... I'll go with your... I'm going with David Parker David Ray. Parker Ray. I think it's very feasible, man. Snake up the Fuck butthole. Yeah, snake that, up that the butthole. <laughs> not good. And hot colds dripped on you. Yep. All right. Well, <laughs> I think we've done plenty of mayhem tonight, so let's hit that fucking outro. <laughs> I did that one for you, Chris. Hell yeah. I love Dying Fetus. Dying (laughs) Fetus, the song Panic Amongst the Herd. It's like these last two years, right? uh, That's what I kind of was thinking. (laughs) I I wonder what the song's about. But nonetheless, Dying Fetus, very nasty. All right. We know that we can ever, never, ever replace CK. It's just not going to happen. But we know that he wanted us to continue. He was tough as nails. And he would want us to step up and just keep it going. So we will. We hope we'll do it justice. Um, So, you know, we can't imagine in getting CCK upset. Now, this motherfucker. Yeah, he's watching over the podcast still. He's here with us. And so, uh, you know, we're definitely not going to invoke the wrath of CCK. Nope. We might throw a wig on him now and then. Oh, he's just got, for he's fun, still festive, wigs, bro. How Santa hat at Christmas. Yeah. Right. So we're going to still do that with CCK here with us. That's, of course, cardboard CK. Uh, we hope that Joey gets his car fixed back on the road. I know that sucks. We yeah, fucked with him sucks. a little Get bit home safe, homie. in we the beginning. You. But, yeah, we wish him well. Uh, bumper music tonight, Exodus, Dying Fetus, and Dust Bolt, Badass. Yeah. 
Uh, CK's intro music, Chris. Crisis, man. Crisis. And that Murder Metal Mayhem intro. No fucking 12, man. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, thanks to everybody out there listening. We mentioned we saw a big jump in numbers this last week. We know it's because of CK. Uh, we appreciate that. For whatever reason, you're checking out the show. And Chris, we got some yeah. good comments here to, to yeah, read did. out. We got uh, Rick Gallagher, 222, says, uh, I was heartbroken to hear the news about CK. He is and always will be the great metal motherfucker. Fucking right, man. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, big time, Rick. Uh, Doreen McGuire commented, I'm so happy you guys are going to keep the podcast going after CK's death. He definitely would have wanted it that way. I'm a listener in Cleveland. Thanks, so. Doreen. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Doreen. A lot. Go and, ahead, uh, Mark uh, Ferruso says, uh, I'm going to miss CK and the great bands he turned so many of us on to. I'm sure whatever you guys do will be fucking awesome. Love the podcast and listening in Vegas. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Thanks, Thank dude. you. You're the shit. And the last one, Dennis Silverstat commented, I'm a listener in Sydney. Hell yeah. And many of my Aussie friends like you guys and listen regularly. So two yes. cities from uh, Australia in the top 10 cities listening still. Fucking a, uh, Melbourne, uh, Victoria, and Canberra. Um, uh, I'm not sure the state. I get them confused. Sorry, but it's capital. Of Australia. So those are both in the top 10. That's awesome. Fucking a. Um, and said, uh, sorry to hear about CK. Enjoyed hearing him each week. So thank you, Dennis. Thanks to everybody that commented. These are just four I picked out, but there's so many. So thank you, guys. Uh, you could check out MurderMetalMayhem.com to listen to all our past episodes. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, you could check us out at pretty much any platform that's out there. So do so. Rate, rate it if you can. Comment. Those rates uh, they help out, man. Come on. Yeah. So please, you know, rate the podcast. Give us some love. Also, you can do that by joining that six 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 club. Patreon dot com slash murder metal mayhem. Three bucks a month. All sorts of VIP shit. It's worth it just for the discounts on the merch. Definitely. Now, you could go to creationofchaos.com if you want to pick up my new book. Um, you can also do the Audible uh, if you like audiobooks or iTunes or Amazon. So check or the description <laughs> for links. If you order them from me, though, Chris, you, you get, get a poster, poster and a bookmark. You get a bookmark, yes. And, and I get, get the shit right out, usually within a couple days. So you'll get it fast. We can't let them go, though, without hearing a karaoke okay. song. I did not have time to get this done with everything I had going on this last weekend, but... It definitely fits the feature tonight, just this crazy-ass fucking Always. psycho nurse. So until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And keep your horns in the air for CK. Fucking A. Crazy for trying and crazy for crying.
dying and I'm crazy for love and you.